Hello everybody, uh, Dr. Rick here dropping in on you. Hope everybody is doing well. I hope that you have gotten your week off to a great start. Uh, look, this is the final week before we began our 12 month uh, transformative immersion, the mind power uh, transformative immersion, a 12 month process of working with me. Uh, I'm taking 30 people, first 30 to sign up, and we're going to go on a 12-month journey. Uh, you click the link in the description box, you'll see the syllabus, the 12-month process of growth. If you are serious about transforming uh, your life for the better, systematically, with purpose, with pace, with direction, you want to be a part of this. Uh, the link is in the description box. Uh, with that being said, it's Tuesday. So guess what? It's Transformational Tuesday. So we're going to talk real briefly about the mental process of transformation. Uh, it has been said, and if you are a person who consumes uh, information and knowledge, if you're a person who pursues uh, notions and ideas and information about things that matter to you and you have at some time entertained the idea of transforming your life or changing your life you have heard that uh, if you want to change your life you start with changing your thinking changing your mindset, changing your state of mind, how you perceive things, how you see things, and how you literally use your thought processes to lay the path and the foundation of change. See, change on the surface is, is inevitable. Life is a dynamic. It is moving. It is constantly in motion. And you are, whether you like it or not, changing. The thing is, you can change in a sense in which you are not the person you were yesterday, but you are not the person you need to be in order to have the things you desire. So what you have to do is go from simply being a result of change to the catalyst of change in your life. That means that you take responsibility for the process of change. When you take the responsibility for the process of change, it now becomes, I start at the foundation, which is what? My thinking. When we get into this immersive, it's going to be a heavy dose of managing your thoughts, a heavy dose of knowing exactly what you're entertaining, knowing when you experience an emotion that's not satisfying to you, fear, doubt, worry, anger, to understand where it comes from and to know how to intercept it and replace it with the right thinking. Uh, to feel those things isn't in of itself a, a, a bad thing, but when you give validity and force to the things that are uh, driving the emotion, you give power to those things and those things become the dominant force in your life. And I'm telling you, even when you practice this consistently, there will be things so forceful in your life that it will knock you off your axis. It will knock you off center and you will for a moment get lost in it. It happens to me. It happens to the people that mentored me. It happens to the people I study and research. It happens to the best of my clients who are doing exceptional and extraordinary things. You get knocked off your center. The thing is, how rapidly, how quickly do you get back on your center? That's going to be uh, dependent upon how much you practice mindfulness, how much you practice guarding your thoughts, guarding your self-talk, guarding your circle. Who are you having conversations with about your situation, about your circumstances, about your change? What is their mindset? Because again, everything is going to come down to what you are creating by way of your thoughts. Your thoughts are the seeds of your destiny. If you look, you are living out the results of the thoughts you had last year, the year before that, and whatever. The thoughts you had 
told you a certain thing about your life. And here's the thing. The thing that you give most attention to mentally, psychologically, are the things that you are going to manifest by way of habitual behavior. Your thinking on a subconscious level, you uh, entertain anywhere from roughly 70 uh, to 72,000, 65 to 70,000 thoughts on a subconscious level a day. The vast majority of those thoughts are the same thoughts every day. Now, this is happening on a subconscious level. The conscious mind can only process 2,000 bits of information per second, so it's completely unaware of the vast majority of the turbulence and the movement and the current of thoughts going on on a subconscious level. But it is those subconscious uh, activities that is governing 96% of your behavior. 96% of your behavior is on autopilot. It is what you are doing. Um, that's why um, Proverbs says, as a man thinks, so is he. Um, that's why you're told to guard your hearts and minds. That's why it says that you need to bring every thought into captivity. Why? Because the thoughts that you entertain are going to be the thoughts that are the seeds you cultivate. So you are literally choosing what thoughts to receive and accept by the conscious movement and the conscious engagement of what you entertain. If you have a victim mindset and you believe that everything is happening to you versus happening for you or responding to you, then you will start to look at everything around you as something outside of your control. You take on a helpless point of view and perspective. So in your helplessness, you're not looking for solutions. You're not taking positive action. You are sitting back and being moved to and fro by the uh, natural currents of life. Nobody escapes the vicissitudes of life. Nobody escapes the dark moments. Nobody is going to get outside of losing loved ones. No one's going to get outside of having their heart broken. No one's going to get out of sight of running into financial difficulties. Nobody's going to get outside of having people betray you. None of, and all of these things are a part of the situation. You're going to have times where you make poor decisions and it's on you and you have to be willing to say, okay, that was on me without becoming so condemning of yourself that you beat yourself up and you lose the opportunity to learn from the mistake and make changes. The beautiful thing about this whole thing and this whole idea of transformation and change is that the more you engage it, the more you become deliberate about what you entertain, what you accept, what you focus on, the more you determine how you move in the direction you take and the more control you uh, assume in the change and the transformation. It is about starting at the surface. I tell people all the time, you can have the best, best plan in the world and have poor psychology. You're going to get poor results. You can have solid, super focused mentality, mindset, psychology, and a plan that is lacking and you will excel. Why? Because the psychology will hold you steady until you make the necessary changes to the plan. But if you, I, I've seen people, perfect plan, poor psychology, doesn't turn out well. I've seen people with no plan and super focused and laser pointed tech psychology that says nothing's going to stop me. Simp the simplest of uh, ideas. My simple idea is first and foremost, I'm built for this. The second is I'm unshakable. The third is I'm unbreakable. The fourth is I'm unstoppable. So when I look at this thing, I say I'm built for this. I'm unshakable. I'm unbreakable. I'm unstoppable. Today I win. And even if the situation isn't presenting the, 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 the declaration or what I hold, my faith is bigger than the circumstance. My faith is bigger than the situation. My faith is bigger than what is being presented to me and what the world will call facts because faith transcends facts. Faith, faith transforms fact, facts. In fact, 
what you're going to find is it is a level of faith. It is moving the limiting beliefs that you have accumulated over time about life. It's about moving them out of the way and bringing in liberating beliefs that remove the parameters, remove the blockages, remove the obstacles, and reveal to you that you are unstoppable and that anything you set your mind to will will take place. When I'm writing in my gratitude journal in the morning, there's a point where I write each and every day. I call things that are not as though they are and they become. Now, that is taken from Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, but what, 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 what is it saying? It's saying that I don't look at what I what, what, I don't I don't give gravity to what I see with my physical eyes and observe in, 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 in the physical realm of the third dimensional realm. And that is uh, what what I don't do. What I do do is I determine the direction I'm going in. And then I give no gravity uh, uh, or, 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 or bearing to the situation because the situation is temporary. The circumstance is temporary. Uh, people who have heard me speak will say all the time that in these moments where things aren't going my way, when things aren't the way that I want them to be, I look at the circumstance and I understand that there are certain things within the circumstance I don't control. But what I do control is my perception. And my perception is I refuse to accept the negativity Uh as being the final answer, so to speak. So there's something in my spirit that disagrees with my circumstances when my circumstances don't align with my vision. See, the, the, the thing is, one of the things that we're going to do in this immersive is we're going to set clear vision. It says write the vision and make it plain so those who read it can run. It, and what is it saying? It's saying that when you write the vision and make it plain, the vision revisits you. When you write the vision and you make it plain, when you clarify your di your, your desires and your destiny and your, your hopes and, and, and your focus, when you write the vision down, it becomes a part of your reality. It is now seared as uh, a priority in your subconscious. It is now literally, the, and, and I tell people all the time, you can type stuff and put stuff up, put, put the type stuff on the vision board, but when you write, write it with your hands. There is a process of transference of power and acknowledgement on a subconscious level when you write something with your hand. When you write it with your hand, you your brain processes it differently than when you type it. And so what you want to do is you want to make a practice of writing. I have multiple journals. I have a gratitude journal. I have a vision journal. I have a high performance journal. And what is it? it, it it's about setting a state of mind. It's about saying and, and, and what I learned is as I developed and I grew. The way I journaled evolved long time ago my journaling was about what i was going through and i'm going to make it i'm going to make it i'm going to make it this is happening that's happening that's happening but i'm going to make it now in 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 in, in light of where i was at the time in the light it's better than sitting up saying oh my god what's going on i can't take it anymore or this is going to destroy me it's saying i'm going to win but it's also constantly acknowledging what's not right what's wrong and now if you look at my journaling, my journaling doesn't even acknowledge anything that I don't want in my life. What it does acknowledge is the things that I am declaring, the things that I am speaking on, the things that I am knowing and reaching for. And it's not in being in denial. It's sitting up understanding the process of faith. Faith is not considering the obstacle. Faith is considering the desire. Faith is considering what it believes and hold to, holds to be true, and it does not accept a visual as the final confirmation. So what do we do? We sit up and say, okay, it's not where I want to be. I'm going to move to a higher level of trusting the process. And here's the beautiful thing about it, and the thing that holds me in the most darkest of times is what I plant, I harvest, and that's 
from a mental, emotional, psychological, spiritual, and physical and tangible level in every area. With the things that I plant, I cultivate, I nurture, I water, I harvest. Nothing can stop that. My destiny is set. Any and and, and 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 you've heard me give this definition before. The very definition of destiny is that the more you try to stop it, or you only ensure that it happens, that nothing or no one can stand in the way of what is to be mine. I have laid the foundation. He says, uh, God says to Job that you shall declare a thing and it shall be established for you so that light will shine upon your path. When you declare something, it's established. And then there is a visual opening and a path to walking down it. It's not easy. I don't want to give you the impression that this is magic or some type of uh, cantation. This is about literally putting in the work to systematically decode and reprogram your subconscious to do for you what you needed to do. And there are going to be moments when everything in your third dimensional reality is not in agreement with what you are setting up. And that's how you know you're on the right path. See, if I'm trying to change for the better, the things that I'm presently experiencing won't align because they are less than what I am striving for. I may be doing great, but if I want to do greater, the things that I'm living in and doing in the way that I'm thinking is not going to align. It's going to automatically produce a level of discomfort, a level of, um, agitation because I'm going to have to evolve. I'm going to have to transform. I'm going to have to change. There's no way around that. You are going to have to find in yourself that place where you decide, this is who I'm going to be. This is what I'm going to have. This is where I'm headed. And there's absolutely no one or nothing that's going to stop me. I'm built for this. And you move into that. And this is the beauty of this thing. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking the, the, the people who are going to be a part of this transformative immersion. I'm taking each and every one of you on a 12 month journey with me of how I systematically grow myself each year. And in the growth uh, of who I am, what I'm able to do, what I'm able to produce, what I'm able to have and do is in direct correspondence to the growth and the and the transformation that I'm able to create. And so this is what I'm challenging everyone to do. You've got to be aware of what you are feeding your subconscious. You've got to be aware of the sub. Uh, and one of the ways that you can tell what you're feeding your subconscious is to listen to your self-talk. Uh, what, did, what, what, what did Christ tell them? In Matthew, he says, out of the abundance, what? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth, what? Speaks. Uh, so when you listen to your conversation, not when you are measuring your words because you know people are listening, but when you're talking to yourself, you having those honest conversations about how you really feel, or when you're just talking real fast and you're just on one of those tangents and you're talking, uh, run it back. Listen to what you're saying, because it's going to tell you what since what you're nurturing in your subconscious, what you're feeding your subconscious most uh, mostly and whatever is prevalent is what's coming to the top. It's what's going to be produced in your behavior and what's produced in your behavior produces your outcomes. So if, if you want to know, listen to. Uh, your self talk, your self talk is basically the program that the supercomputer, your brain is running. It's the reinforcement of what has already been consumed. So you got to be extremely careful about what you're saying, right? So again, I'm challenging you. There's so much that can be done. There's so much that you can do. And this is my challenge. Develop a path. Start journaling. Write the vision. Make it plain. Start journaling. Speak the things that are not as though they are. And they will become you keep speaking them regardless of what you're seeing. You keep speaking them regardless of what you're feeling. You keep speaking them until the, it changes the emotion. You keep speaking them until it anchors itself as a new belief. You got to get rid of those limiting beliefs. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. I want to thank all of you guys who will watch this video. And I want to bless you. I want you to believe in yourself. I want you to speak power. I want you to believe and think power. Uh, and 
there's absolutely nothing that will be withheld from you once you learn how to do this. I hope that some of you will join me on this transformative journey as we go from October to October. Uh, I'm excited about it. Uh, this is the last week to register and I'm only taking 30 people. Get on board. Uh, as I always say, I live my life on full so that when I leave this place, I die on E. And I'm challenging you to do the same thing. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day.